You are listening to the Star Coach Podcast with Meg Rentschler, episode 49. Welcome to Star Coaches, the show for professional coaches that brings you coaching strategies, tools, and resources. Whatever your focus or niche, take a front seat weekly as industry leaders, decision makers, and innovators share their wisdom and expertise on the ins and outs of successful coaching. Now join your host, Meg Rentschler as she connects you with your star coaching potential. Hello, Star Coach listeners. So great to have you here. Thanks for joining the show today. I have a wonderful guest lined up for you and am looking forward to sharing her interview with you in just a moment. But I wanted to take a second to talk about community. That is something that If you're on my email list, you're getting some emails about the importance of community and belonging and us sort of working together. And I also received an email today from a listener about how we could better interact as a community to share some insights that each of you are receiving from the show. And I thought that that was a fabulous idea. The Star Coach Show is about to hit its one year anniversary. So you now have had, you know, this is our 49th show. We're close to, and actually, if you include the intro show, we're actually at number 50 today. So you've had lots of different information brought to you, insight shared, different wisdom over this past 11 months. And the point that was brought forward that I want to encourage is how can we begin communication about, wow, this show really struck me this way, or I was able to apply this principle to my work with a client, and this is what happened. If we could begin to get some communication going about how you're utilizing the information that that you're gaining from the show. I would love to have some communication about that. We do have a Facebook page, Star Coach Show on Facebook, and that might be a great place to kind of get some of this communication going. If you could post something about your favorite show or something that you learned from a show that you were then able to apply to your relationship with your family or something that you did with a client, that could be really dynamic. So that's my challenge to you for you kind of giving back to one another after almost a year, hopefully listening to the show at whatever point during this year you started to listen to the show, even if today is your very first show, I encourage you to go to our Facebook page. I will post that link on starcoachshow.com so that you can access our Facebook page. We actually have the link on that page. You can access and we can begin a discussion. What are you enjoying about the show? I love that idea. I want to thank Vera for sending that idea in, and let's go ahead and begin a discussion. Now, today, we're going to talk about how we bring value to our clients and how we position our practices in such a way that we are able to create the kind of value we want for our clients while also creating an income that helps us be the best we can be so we're not in a place of scarcity or panic when we're trying to to serve our clients. Our guest today is Jennifer Thornton. She's been involved in cultivating commercial and human resources leadership for over 20 years. She has this incredible history with working with diverse international teams and multicultural teams and is also a certified Clifton Strengths coach. So what we're going to talk about today is how she's taken that background of being able to work with these multicultural teams to build teams to help executives be the best that they can be and leverage her experience with the Clifton Strengths assessment, as well as a bit of a retail side of her practice, which is in 
offering a traits assessment to companies to help them maximize their workforce. So Jennifer talks today about the value that she's able to bring, A, through being a strengths coach. And we spend the first half of the interview looking at how a coach can leverage strengths assessment. And in this situation, the Clifton Strengths Assessment to maximize a client's self-awareness, to take those strengths and sort of help look through that lens of what somebody is best at. And then we're also going to look at how she positioned her practice and her reason for also using the OAD assessment as a retail portion of her practice to also help companies bring out the best in their employees and to give her a foot in the door, per se, to be able to showcase and pay attention to what the company most needs, but also be able to bring in what she does best for companies. So it's a really dynamic interview. I encourage you to listen all the way through to the end. Jennifer gives value through the entire interview. And like I said, if you find something that really stands out to you, something that you might work with or apply to your practice, let's have a discussion on our Facebook page. Let's go to our interview with Jennifer Thornton. Jennifer, welcome to the show. It is awesome to have you here. Oh, great to see you too. So I am excited to explore with you a couple of the specialties that you bring into the field of coaching. And so I'd like to start with maybe first, what did interest you in coaching and a little bit about your background and what's brought you to the place that you're in right now? Yeah. So, you know, my background, it came from retail, actually. I grew up in the retail industry, you know, started actually as a store manager for a large retailer and worked my way through, you know, district manager and through the commercial side. And that's, you know, kind of where I started coaching, you know, you have teams of 50 people in a store, a lot of young adults and, you know, spending time with them and, you know, coaching them, providing them feedback and encourage them, you know, is kind of part of, you know, the success of those early days. And then, you know, I transitioned into HR, I did recruiting, learning and development. And then the last four years of my retail career, I was an international And when it was time for me to kind of make a decision on what I wanted next, I just spent time thinking about what I love to do. Where did I get great feedback? Where were my strengths? And at the end of the day, I knew very clearly it was in coaching. It was when I felt that I contributed the most. It was where I got the feedback and the thank yous. And I just really, you know, stopped and paused and said, you know, this is the path. I looked at the past success and, you know, I'm going to leverage it in the future. Excellent. So with your coaching, you have a particular focus. You are a certified a strengths coach. Tell us a little bit about that and what created that focus for you in your coaching. So yes, I'm a certified um, Clifton strength coach and I, you know, discovered the strength product and, and learned about it in my, you know, past retail career. I worked for an organization and we were a strength-based organization. So I saw firsthand how it really built teams, how you could, you know, talk to someone around their development and really spend top time talking to them about what made them great versus focusing, which we so often do in the workplace, focusing on what they're not doing and really saying, okay, here is the place you're struggling. How do we do it your way versus doing it the way that their supervisor wanted them to or a coworker had done it in the past? And so I really fell in love with strengths, you know, through just working with it and then practical application. And then in 2016, I had the opportunity to go through the certification process with Gallup. And it's, you know, was one of those moments in your life where you're like, this is the week I made some big decisions. And it was the week that I really decided that, you know, when I did have my own practice, that strengths was going to be a part of it. And it is today. Excellent. You know, I heard you say once, and I think that this is so powerful, that when you worked internationally with your company, you were able to use strengths as a 
common language. And yes. because internationally, obviously, there's many languages. Yes. <laughs> so just that statement that we use strengths as sort of the common language mm-hmm. in the culture, how did that impact the culture using strengths as your common language? Yeah, it was really great. You know, I worked on a team and at any given time in a week in a meeting, we could have over 20 countries represented. And so the difference in culture and language, you know, there was a lot of differences. And we spent a lot of times talking about the differences. And we spent a lot of time being frustrated where US teams struggled, you know, to communicate with a team from I don't know, Japan. And so what we did is we said, you know what, let's kind of come back and say, where are we common? And how do we appreciate that? And so that became strengths. And so we started in markets, you know, where we owned and operated stores in Hong Kong and China, London, Mexico, and started working with our international U.S. team to help them understand strengths. And so instead of focusing on our cultural differences, we're able to find our culture similarities. You know, people would say, oh, I'm an achiever too, instead of saying, oh, you know, this is different. It was all about what we were the best at and what we were the, and where we were the same. And it really changed that conversation from a negative conversation to a very positive conversation. And it built energy and excitement. And people, you know, were always looking forward to these meetings they used to dread because we got to talk about strengths and go through coaching and, and all of those things on top of, you know, the day-to-day tasks that we were there to accomplish. That is so cool. And one of the other things, so you know, people were noting when other people shared their strengths. As a matter of fact, Mm -hmm. you and I shared that three of our top five strengths are similar. How does that also work? If you, let's say you're coaching a team and and you're using strengths, how does complementary strengths or, oh, you have that, that's something that is not even like in my top 10 strengths. How can that help? build teams and and from a coaching perspective, sort of coming in with that strengths focus, how can you Mm -hmm. leverage different strengths? Yeah, so great question. And, you know, we did a lot of strength discovery around our goal setting. And so if we had a specific goal, you know, we would look at our tactics that we needed and we would look at, you know, the core skill sets we would need against that goal. But what we've added to that, which was very different in the workplace is we added what strengths do we need? And so when we set these big goals and we were around a table, we talked about that. And then was who has that and where in the project does that enter? So we could say, you know, at the beginning of this project, we need our learners, our analytical people. We need a lot of people who can, you know, get the information pulled together, you know, get all the details. And then we needed some more of our influencers, you know, if they needed to go to the executive team and influence change, you know, so then it's like, where do you pass that baton and who do you pass it? to based on their strengths and really understanding that all of us played an important part, but why did we play it? What was our responsibility to the group? And when did we show up to play that role? It was very important and we saw some big success from it. Excellent. So as people begin to realize, oh, well, I'm a learner, so I'm going to bring in, I'm going to be motivated to bring in new information and to, to learn that new information and seek out that information. But we're going to need this influencer because I'm not comfortable necessarily going and influencing the upper echelons, or or maybe we need somebody who is strategic to do X, Y, and Z. So, so how did you basically, and how might a coach mm-hmm. help? Le- first of all, maybe understand where each of these strengths is best utilized. Yeah. So we, you know, it started through team dynamics, and so we took all of our, you know, teams as a unit. So, you know, example, the team in Mexico, we took them as a unit. Then we took the international franchise team as a unit and we did team sessions with them because it was important for them to understand not only their own strengths, but their teams before we started integrating. And so that was our first key. And as a coach, you can come in to a group and help them really start to understand where their team strengths are. Are they heavy in one area or another? You know, you can use exercises to kind of explore the different strengths, talk about 
conflict, you know, talk about goals and, you know, do some really robust team engagement exercises to start to help the team discover what their strengths are and how they can use it. And a lot of times, once you started that process, then the people you're working with are saying, oh, I could use it for this or, oh, no wonder why I'm always picking that up or, oh my gosh, if I'd only known, I would have called you every time I got to this point where I got stuck. And so honestly, you know, once they start to, you know, learn the program and and be educated on their team strengths and their own, it's just beautiful to watch them actually come up with some great ideas and 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 connect those dots, huh? Yeah, they do. It's a lot of fun. And then you take those different groups and then you start to integrate them because they're comfortable as an individual. They're now comfortable in their direct group. And then how do you then take all of them and start to move them together um, and be very strategic at it. And, you know, as a coach, you know, we can kind of step out and watch the group and help bring them together and in a way that allows them to then focus on their team versus focusing on the strategy. It's really fun stuff, exciting stuff, seeing people's eyes light up, seeing Mm -hmm. that maybe this other person has always annoyed me, but now I realize (laughs) that aspect that they were bringing forward is part of their strength. So how can I maybe shift my perspective of how I interpret that, how I interact with, and as I think all of us as coaches know, any strength used to too high of a degree Mm -hmm. might become a weakness. So then how do I help people leverage their strengths in a way that is more conducive to the overall flow rather than maybe overpowering, like using too much pepper, you know, kind of yeah. brings a, a dish from being, oh, that's yummy to, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's a that, that packs a punch. So how do you as you are marketing your practice now and work coming from that place of being a Clifton strengths coach as mm-hmm. well as leveraging your coaching ability at all? How does how does being a certified strengths coach impact the way that you approach clients in from a marketing standpoint? Yeah. Well, you know, the great thing about the Clifton Strengths is it has a great fan base. A lot of people have heard of it. They, you know, have heard very positive things. And so, you know, it does help that, you know, it's a known product out there. On top of that, you know, you enter a conversation, you know, when you're selling, you know, your business or your product, you know, with facts and, you know, the Clifton organization and Gallup, they have so many resources to help you understand the tool, sell the tool, you know, and there's a lot of analytics when it comes to the workplace, you know. So in the workplace, those who are able to use their strengths daily, their engagement goes up, turnover goes down, productivity and profit go up. And so there's all these research that you can use when talking to a client about their business and their business needs. And, and, you know, there's proof in, in the results. That's really powerful as well. One of the questions I get asked frequently by whether it's new coaches or coaches who have been you know, practicing for a while is there are so many certifications out there. There's so many different kinds of specialties. They're all an investment in time and money and resources. Mm -hmm. So if I were to just sort of, and we're not selling anything here, but just, you know, if you you were to say, you know, what your level of satisfaction with choosing that certification for yourself, where would you put, you know, how satisfied you are with that? I would say very satisfied and a couple of reasons why. Number one, it's a great product and it is incredible to use with clients. It helps them not only in the workplace, but at home and as parents and their relationships. So it is a tool that can help people in so many different facets of their life. On top of that, you know, Gallup and Cliff, you know, for the Clifton Strengths, they provide so many great resources. And, you know, there's the obviously just the certification process you go through, but for anyone who is a strength champion, you can go to the YouTube channel and there are free web webinars and and interviews. They've got an incredible blog. They have Facebook pages. And so, you know, many of the people that are interacting out there with strengths, you know, we call them strength champions because they truly are champions. They're out there, you know, talking about strengths, using strengths in in their daily life. And there's just so many resources so that you can continue to improve and, and work. Of course, Learner is one of my strengths. And so 
any opportunity that I can leverage my learner keeps me happy and my clients happy. So I'm always out listening to the podcast. That it's important to know that there are so many resources to be able to access. And one of the other things that you said, and I'm going to own up to this with the audience, I apologize. Sometimes I get focused because I'm an executive coach and I work with leadership teams. I get pumped and excited about what it can do within an organization. But the truth is strengths is something that couples can use and Mm -hmm. families can use. And there's, there's a parent strength. There's actually a strength assessment for like 10 to 14 year olds, correct? Correct. So yep. There's lots of different ways. We were talking about leveraging it with new grads or, or college students. And you were talking about how you leverage it with people who are going into interviews. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Because that was fascinating. Yeah. So, you know, you're absolutely right. You can use strengths in every piece of your life. There's strength-based marriage, strength-based parenting, strength-based faith, you know, everything out there you can imagine they've used it. In the interview space, you know, when you're out interviewing, you get asked all the time, what are you good at? What are you not good at? You know, and, and really helping someone understand their strengths and not only understand what they are, but how do they show up in the workplace allows them to go into the interviews and very confidently describe who they are in the workplace. So for example, if you are an achiever and you, you know, your interview, of course, you're not going to say, I'm an achiever. I'm going to, you know, achieve things, but you can say things like you get the best out of me when I'm and have the opportunity to work on teams that are very productive, tight timelines, you know, that it's very important to, to close a deal or close a project. And so you're able to communicate so clearly to your potential employer what you do well. And I think that can make a big difference when you're looking for that right match. Huge difference when you're able to communicate it in a way that speaks to what they want to hear, not what they want to hear, like that you're filling them with stuff that isn't true, but that you're articulating it in a way that employers want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. That's really powerful. Yeah. And it works on the flip side, you know, when you go in, you know, you're interviewing the employer also. And so you start to ask questions to learn if that environment's going to be great for your strengths. So if you are someone who is very analytical, you can, you know, talk to the organization, you know, tell me about how you evaluate success. What numbers do you use to evaluate success? And so those questions you ask will help you identify if it's the right place for you to be. So it works on both sides. And I think, you know, when you're looking for the right job, not only is the actual job important, but how you do that job and the environment in which you do that job are just as important, if not more important, so you can be successful. Great stuff. You have sort of two facets of your business. And Mm -hmm. I know many listeners are interested in how do I create a successful, thriving business, doing what I'm passionate about, bringing value to my clients. Mm -hmm. And when you made a decision to go into your practice, you were very intentional about sort of two routes that you were going to take in your Mm -hmm. business. We've just spent some time talking about strengths, and that's a core piece of, of what you do. But you also have decided decided to have a focus of OAD. Tell us a little bit about what is OAD and what has that done for your business? Yeah. So the OAD, it's Organization Analyze and Design. And it's a tool that I have used in my previous life in an organization. It's an adjective-based assessment. It takes like five minutes to do it. So it's incredibly time efficient. And it gives you a really clear viewpoint in someone's traits. So it is introvert, extrovert, level of assertiveness, emotional control when it comes to decision-making, creativity and decision-making. And so this tool can be used in the workplace for many reasons. It is, you know, used as an assessment tool. Then once someone starts the organization, it's a coaching tool. You know, you understand this person, how they're hardwired. So as a supervisor, how do I coach them? You can use it for team building to ensure that you're very well-rounded, conflict resolution. So there's a lot of uses for it in the workplace. And, you know, I worked with it for years, over 10 years myself in the workplace. So I knew that the product was productive and worth its value and brought, you know, something to the table. How did you become familiar with it? You said you'd used it for years. So how did your organization become familiar with it, maybe? 
Yeah. Your so previous organization. Our previous organization. So one of our HR executives brought it to the table um, and we started using it um, in the corporate environment and at different levels in management. But over time, we started using that assessment with every single sales associate we use or hire. Wow all the way up to our CEO. So it became part of our culture. And it was great at, you know, kind of that lower entry level job, because if I am, you know, someone who is very processed, and I like, you know, to understand what my job is going to look like in rules. And it's my first job, I'm, you know, 18 years old, my first job, and I'm at the mall. Well, based on that, we knew that it was likely that you would be really successful out of the gate as maybe a stock person or a cash year. And so we wanted to put these young adults entering into the workplaces in places where they would naturally fit. And then once they got comfortable there, then we would train them to do many things and and they could do, you know, anything throughout the store. But, you know, your first job is so hard. So why not place someone where they were going to naturally be the best fit? And so it was a really productive tool to um, improve workplace satisfaction, reduce turnover and, and those types of things. Excellent. So how are you using the O OAD survey to leverage your practice and, and your business? Yeah. So um, I'm a sales distributor for the product. And so I have that second piece of my business, like we spoke about, and that piece allows me to go out to businesses, you know, sell the product, talk about the benefits and build really great relationships with organizations. And then as I continue building those relationships, you know, I can then offer them coaching team building, you know, succession plan workshop. So that OED is kind of an entry into the conversation about how to continue to develop your organization and your key members. And, you know, it can help me, you know, it helps me grow my business on the coaching side, but also provides me with income on another side. And I grow as I grow my practice with a product that I truly believe in. And I I know the difference it can make. So if an organization wanted to utilize the tool. They like buy the tool so that they can kind of use it with their, I mean, paint that picture a little clearer. Yeah. So basically, you know, once someone decides to use OED for their organization, they get their own specific website portal. They can process those assessments on their own and then they get those results back. Part of the requirements of using the OED is that individuals that are using it go through very specific OED training. So their HR department, for example, would be highly trained on exactly how to read the assessment, use the assessment. We have different types of trainings, the basics up to a train the trainer program. And during the time period, that organization really starts to see how they can use it to drive their business. Um, And as a consultant, you know, it's opportunity for me to work with them and help them find ways to use the tool to get the results that they're looking for. Excellent. So then you build that relationship and it's Mm -hmm. possible that that could then leverage into some additional business with the organization, Mm -hmm. maybe doing some coaching of leadership teams or creating trainings. I mean, there's many different things that, that people might be interested in, but it gives you a door into the organization. As you said, it brings an income for you, which is always helpful because we don't want to fall into a place of desperation in our businesses that doesn't tend to attract Mm -hmm. people. And then you're able to continue to build relationships and bring value on many different levels. Yeah, it does. It provides a lot of variety while still working with my ideal customer. You know, my ideal customer is, you know, corporate environment, you know, companies who are very focused on the health and success of their employees. And so though, I have a very targeted customer, I have a lot of variety I can bring that customer. I can bring you know, a trait-based assessment that they can use across their entire organization. I can bring strengths to them. And if they want to be a strength-based organization, strengths and OAD work beautifully together because one's trait-based and one's strengths. So you could have two people with the same OAD profile. One may have high influence strengths and the next person may have high relationship strengths. And so then how do you start to, you know, evaluate and, and continue to coach on these different levels and then bring in that variety that we spoke about, you know, team engagement, executive coaching, team building, all of those types of things. And, you know, that was important to me when I was designing my practice was variety. 
And not only do I like it, but you know, the clients are going to appreciate that too. Absolutely. And I know that you mentioned, not in this interview, but we, we've spoken and that when we look at strengths and when we look at the way that our strengths fall in, in a particular order, mm-hmm. there's a very unique aspect to that. So if you look at, at what people, the OAD sort of profile mm-hmm. and how similar are those? So will you have people in an organization that have very similar OAD profiles and then what makes them maybe unique is also laying some strengths over the top of those? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can have two people with an influence pattern, which is an OAD pattern influencers are, you know, highly assertive, very outgoing, you know, middle range detail. And say that person has that profile and they have, you know, analyze and command and some of those strong traits that are very influence or execution driven. And then the next person has a very similar influence pattern, but maybe they have woo or individual organization, connectedness, and they're very much a relationship-driven person. And so they show up different in the workplace. And people are like, you know, oh, I have this or I have that. But when you take your traits and your strengths and you combine those, really gives you a um, kind of a 360 view of yeah. someone and what they bring to the table. So I was thinking that by by overlaying the strengths with the OAD, it helps people understand that even though they might have a similar sort of profile with the OAD, then you bring in their strengths and and it creates, this is how each of us kind of the lens we look through might be different and how we can blend all those together. That's, and one of the main things that we do as coaches is increase awareness. And I think that using tools to help complement that can just kind of create that clarity, maybe just a little bit quicker or just at a different level than also working to move towards that awareness through coaching can also maybe deepen that, bring it to another level. It's all these different dynamics that kind of come together that you're offering your clients. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and strengths does that. You know, I think with strengths particularly it gives it gives a name to things that we do naturally. And you know, we've talked sometimes we naturally do it a little too much or you know our strengths get offended every day. You know, we enter the world with our mind and how we view things. And so when someone comes at us in a very different way, you know, we're like, that's weird or that offends me or that doesn't seem natural. Well, it's just because they have different strengths. And so in the workplace, when you start to appreciate what someone brings to the table and appreciate why they're bringing it versus I just don't like it. Or you can say to someone, hey, I appreciate you're deliberate. I appreciate that you found all these possible roadblocks but we have to move forward through it. Bring me your top three versus just shutting someone down saying, you're just coming to me with the obstacles, you know, really understanding that person and, and providing them guidelines so that you work can work together in a healthy, productive environment. Excellent. So both of these tools open doors for you. You've recently had some doors opened potentially with the OAD, which is very exciting. Can How did you leverage this potential, very large client that you're mm-hmm. hopefully going to close? How did you leverage that with these tools that we've talked about? Yeah. So with the client that I'm currently working on, you know, I did enter that conversation based on OAD only, mm-hmm. but they are a client that's large. They have a lot of units or different um, offices around the United States. So OAD is great for high volume customers. And so I knew based on their profile, OAD would be a fit for them. And so I entered that conversation talking about a pre-employment assessment because it meets the EO standards. And I entered it from a team building, coaching, and just really what this tool can bring to their organization and, and you know the reduction of turnover and what that could financially mean to them. And that opened the door to the conversation. And then once that conversation started, then it was really learning their specific needs after I kind of looked at the company high level from an outsider's perspective, then understanding and very similar to just coaching, you know, understanding their needs, asking questions, helping them discover how a tool could help them and drive their business and their overall results. And then once you get through that obstacle, then, you know, the rest of it's pretty smooth selling, you know, with this client, because I am 
am in the process of closing OAD. Once that is closed, you know, and I have that long-term relationship with them because that is part of my business model is I do become, you know, someone that they can call on, a consultant, someone who's there for them. Then over time, as they have more things come up, then it opens it a conversation to here's how, what else I can do to help you. I don't feel like it would be right, at least for me, to walk in and sell all of it, the no. whole thing, or, you know, right at the beginning. Um, so you do have to pace yourself and understand what that client needs at that time and approach them in that way. Well, and the other thing that you said that I really want people to hear is marketing your practice is staying tuned into the client's needs. What does the client, you know, you did an assessment, you you paid attention to their needs, you asked questions, you helped them discover what would be helpful for them. It's not about here, let me, let me do, do, let me fix this. Let me sh- prove to you how important what I'm bringing is for you. It's, it's about how might there be a match and a fit. And let me start where you're at. And as you said, you know, then to develop the relationship, continue to keep your ears open for what's important for them, continue to bring that value. And it may or may not be that you take that to the next level. But if you're focused on what that client really needs, chances are, you know, there will be more opportunity as long as you're focused on them and not on you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, working with a client versus working with an individual, the practices are still the same. It's, you know, what do they need at that time? And then how do you help them on their journey instead of forcing, you know, our own agendas or needs or wants on an organization? And so, yeah. The or coaching, an individual. Absolutely. Or an individual. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, coaching traditional practices show up in selling, at least for me and in the way that I do it that's comfortable for me. I believe our core comp- competencies within coaching uh, can be absolutely reflected in the way that we market and build our business. We want to keep that active listening and, and that coaching presence and and build that relationship and build trust and intimacy. I mean, all those are things yeah. that, that are just as relatable in the way that we market as in the way that we coach. So yeah. thank you for that wisdom and, and for your dyna- sharing the way that you've dynamically built your practice in such a way that meets your needs because you are using products and tools that you believe in, that, that it, you did your due diligence, you thought about, you had the opportunity to work with OAD for 10 years mm-hmm. as an internal person. And then it made logical sense for you as you transitioned to outside practice that this is a tool that I believe in, that I believe can bring value. So I'm going to add it to my practice, sort of in this two-tiered practice that you have really dynamic stuff. And thank you for being willing to to bring that forward for the audience. Yeah, no problem. It's, you know, building your practice is such an intimate act and, you know, finding what works for you and the products you believe in and understanding your core customer and, and, you know, pulling together, you know, a practice that meets their needs, I think is, you know, one of the biggest keys to successful coaching practice. Excellent. Thanks for taking the time to be with us today. It's always wonderful to spend time with you, Jennifer. All right. Thanks so much. Meg. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Being able to gain clarity about who we serve and how we get into their awareness is sometimes a challenge for us as we build our own businesses. And I really appreciate Jennifer joining us today to share the way that she has leveraged her different strengths to bring the best she can to her clients. If you'd like to know more about Jennifer Thornton or her business, 304 Coaching, be sure to visit starcoachshow.com and we'll have information about Jennifer on our resource page. Also, I want to encourage you, let's start a discussion and visit us on Facebook at Star Coach Show on Facebook, and we can have a discussion about what's really stood out for you in this interview and in others. We are so close to the launch of the membership site, and I've been getting great feedback, people ready to join the community, excited to join the community, to earn CEUs through the membership site, to see the raw uncut videos of the interviews, and get members-only information and resources. So 
keep your ears primed for more information about the membership site, which will be launching in just over a week. Also, while you're on the Star Coat Show website, never forget about our ongoing book giveaway with books from our guests. We always have a great book that we're giving away. You don't want to miss that, but you can't win a book if you don't go to the website and the contact page and sign up for the free book giveaway. All right, then. I hope that you have a fabulous week. This is Meg Rentschler wishing you the very best for your coaching success. We'll see you next week.